Hey everyone, so I'm actually at research right now and I have some spare time so I figured, hey, why not just make a video? So this video is just going to be like certain terms that are associated with the pre-med slash medical life and med school life that maybe not everyone knows so I just want to get those out of the way and I made a little list so I'm going to keep looking back at it. So the first one is just pre-med. So if someone says that they're pre-med, that means that they are hoping to attend medical school at some point. And pre-med, you don't have to be a specific major. You basically just have to fulfill certain requirements in terms of like chemistry, physics, I think they added sociology stuff since I applied. And you just have to fulfill those certain classes and then you apply to med school at some point. So that's what a pre-med person is. Eventually that pre-med person has to take a test called the MCAT. Um, I took it my sophomore summer. Some people take it after they graduate. You don't have to take it at a specific time. You just have to take it before you submit your application. Or actually, you can take it after. I don't know. You just have to take this test in order to attend medical school. Um, the scale has changed. It used to be at a 45. I don't even know what it's out of now. I should know. My sister's going to take it. But um, yeah, so that's a test that you have to take. That's a big one. There's something called the MSAR, and this is more specific towards those pre-meds. It's something that you can use to check what the average MCAT, GPA, and like certain things that are kind of characteristic of a certain med school, and that's really helpful for when you're applying to med school. Um, there's the AMCAS, and that is the American Medical College Application Service, and that is what people use to apply to med school. It's an application service. Now, there's one thing that differs. So there's two different types of medical programs that you can apply to. There's allopathic versus osteopathic. And I'm going to just read out what osteopathic is. It's osteopathic medical schools emphasize training students to become primary physicians. DOs practice a whole person approach to medicine. So they regard your body as an integrated whole. Basically, from my understanding, is allopathic M is in people you see with an MD osteopathic people with the DO at the with their name so from what I've been told the education is really similar except the osteopaths have some sort of additional osteopathic medicine and that's about it I think that our residencies used to be separate but I think there was a merger so now that um, osteopaths can apply to allopathic residencies and I don't know the politics behind that but I think that it's now becoming a little more integrated. I actually shadowed an osteopath and he was a great doctor so I don't know if there's very much difference. I think it's just what you're interested in and not to be like not demeaning osteopathic schools at all but I do think that their GPAs and, and CATs are a little lower compared to allopathic schools but I think that they probably produce the same type of physician like I really was amazed by the guy who was an osteopathic physician so I definitely think that they can be, they are comparable so the structure of getting into med school you do your undergraduate studies that can range however long it takes for you to finish your classes and get your degree so that's typically four years then you apply to med school. You can take a gap year in between or gap years. I just went straight, so it was four years of undergrad, and then you have your four years of medical school. So the general standard setup is that you have two years of just classes, and you're not really doing any rotation stuff. So first two years, you're just in a classroom studying. And then the second two years, so the last two years, you are going on rotations. Rotations is when you basically get to experience each type of specialty. So specialty meaning like maybe orthopedics, internal medicine, all those different like specializations of medicine you get to experience like OBGYN. So you do that your last two years. And in between, I think most people do it their, after their second year summer or the summer of your second year before you start your third year, there's this test called step one, which is basically like the previous described test called the MCAT, except this one has a big impact on where you're gonna go for residency. 
and basically maybe possibly determine what your specialty will be and it can limit or broaden your specialty choices. So that's a huge one to study for. I'm going to have to start studying for that because that's going to be, I mean, in a year from now, I'll hopefully have taken it. So that is actually, they're like the boards and there's three parts to it. So you take step one, which is the most important in my opinion. Then you take step two, I think in your fourth year after you graduate. And then you have step three, which I think you take in like residency. I'm not entirely sure. Please feel free to correct me. So one huge resource for studying for that test is called first aid. So if you hear med students saying something about first aid, it's just this condensed book of information that you should know for when you're studying for that step one exam. And it's just, there's yearly updated versions of it. And um, yeah, you just, you get a yearly version. I have like a PDF and hard copy. That's a huge thing for med students when studying for that step one exam. Then you also have Pathoma, which is a video collection that also has stuff that's pertinent to that step one exam. And that's, I think, by a guy named Dr. Sutar. And those are very important videos to be watching for that step one exam. Um, so then the basic setup for like residency. So you apply to residency, you get whatever you want. The first year I think is called you're an intern. So it's your internship year and you do your residency. And then if that's in whatever specialty you kind of wanted, whether it be general surgery, whether it be OBGYN, anesthesiology, and then you can further go on and get a fellowship. So I think, I think like if I wanted to do like in surgery, you can do general surgery and then you do a fellowship and kind of be more like selective in where you're specializing. So that's just how it works. I don't know too much about residency because that's far off for me, but that's just some, so those were just some terms in case you want to show this to your friend who's like, I know nothing about pre-med life. Or if you're considering pre-med life and you just want to get some basic terms down, these are some terms that might be good to know. Um, yeah, I'm a little flustered after a whole day's worth of research. So I'm a little tired. So if this video isn't that great, please let me know. I can either redo it or answer any questions in the comments. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Have a great weekend, guys.